Africa Mkangala, and I'm an under 40 CEO. The African Renaissance. The concept that the African people and nation shall overcome the current challenges confronting the continent and achieve cultural, scientific, and economic renewal is here. And with young men and women taking the lead, some call them the new school heroes. We call them under 40 CEOs. Africa Nkangala describes himself as a businessman, farmer, socioeconomic activist, and volunteer. He attended the international school in Kuala Lumpur and believes firmly in African excellence by Africans for Africa. With core strengths in business strategy development, creative consulting, solution-oriented strategy development, and client relationship management, Africa has been in business for over nine years. Africa is a director at Urban Zulu Creative Media Group, director at Nkangala Empowerment Resources, non-executive director at Rico Eddy Consulting, Marketing Director at MIH Farms, and Director at Dikaba ICT. All right, welcome to Under 40 CEOs, Africa. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank All right, bro. Me. You attended high school in Kuala Lumpur. How did that happen? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's all the way in uh, Southeast Asia, in uh, Malaysia to be in fact. Uh, my family uh, moved that side because of work and I applied for a, a bursary and I got a bursary that side. So you once worked as a business uh, development strategist with Chartered Accountants. Are you a Chartered Accountant? No, I'm not. Um, I worked at ECs with CA as a business development strategist, which basically um, within the work that should come into the company, you strategize around which the different avenue and revenue streams, uh, mm -hmm. focusing primarily on obviously your audit clients and your um, training, uh, business training, so for SMMEs and so forth. So that's mm -hmm. what I did there. Oh, oh wow. okay. So you're a director at Auburn Zulu Creative and also SMG Capital. <laughs> now, how do you juggle these roles with being group CEO at um, Bricks Media? Uh, what we've done to to make all our lives um, so much easier and obviously to make the group in totality more efficient mm -hmm. um, is we've amalgamated some of the aspects of it. So Urban Zulu is a, is a comms and uh, media agency. Mm -hmm. We've taken it and then it has become, it has been swallowed by the BRICS media company along with the other media entities that we had. Um, the SMG, the particular role I, I play there, is more from a, a strategic marketing perspective, which l relies mainly on the media entities, in fact. Um, mm. So, yeah, that's how I pretty much balance them all. Okay, so I'm particularly interested in the role you played at uh, Afro-Asia Advisory Group. Please do shed some light on this. Predominantly as a consultant to assist them set up. So what they did, they offered um, a myriad of advisory services, both for the African continent and with the, the, the Asian continent, and trying to uh, create a bridge almost between the different bilateral agreements that exist and leveraging that for their the clients. So I was responsible from setting that up pretty much from when they were registered to setting up their offices, their corporate identity, their different strategies, their presentations, mm. um, yeah. So it was, I mean, obviously it was a, a, a very nice uh, experience for me. It, it, got, it taught me a lot about what happens in the diplomatic space too, because mm. those bilateral uh, agreements are done at a diplomatic level. This is Under 40 CEOs. Africa plays an integral role within the board of the Bread Foundation, a continental nonprofit organization focused on empowering the African vision through investment promotion, youth SME collaboration, and education promotion, he is an active member of numerous economic-oriented youth and business organizations, including the Black Business Council, the Youth Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Progressive Blacks in ICT, Black Farmers Association, and also the former chairperson of the Progressive Youth in Business, Gauteng. So you're the chairperson of uh, Progressive Youth in Business. And uh, okay, what's, what's the vision of this organization and what's your mandate within it? PYB for short. 
um, is a forum of uh, young entrepreneurs and business owners who, that tries to advocate for the participation of youth in the mainstream economy. Mm. Um, so we do that by developing different programs that leverage on what government might, uh, might have prescribed, what business should be doing too, and we try to almost facilitate a, a particular environment and act as a catalyst towards driving uh, uh, more youth to, to own their businesses, but also uh, play a much bigger part in the, um, uh, in the economy. For instance, last year, as the provincial chair, uh, we launched the Youth in Mining Procurement Transformation Summit. Um, it focused on changing the procurement space within mining. We realize that not every young uh, black person will be able to own a mine, but the real money that uh, people can make and the, and the economic space that they can play in is in procurement. So we looked at understanding and having a summit to understand and break down where the problems are from a transformation perspective, and then obviously work from then as a platform to finding solutions. All right, so please do share about uh, the vision and mission of the BRICS group. Okay. Uh, the BRICS media company um, focuses on obviously the BRICS nations, which is Brazil, Russia, um, India, China, and South Africa. Um, we look at it from a media perspective and a communications perspective. We've realized that not a lot of people understand what BRICS is about. Not a lot of people know what to do or where to go to and how to leverage the different opportunities that, that, that are there. As an emerging market or emerging country that represents not just South Africa alone, but the, the, the continent, um, it, it, South Africa can then play a pivotal role in making sure that the African continent leverages that relationship that has been established um, in BRICS to its development goals. Um, so that's basically what we do. Uh, we, we own a publication called the BRICS Journal. Uh, it's currently... Issue 3 has been out in stores. If you're in South Africa, it's at Exclusive Books and Spa, and you can obviously find it online. Um, but it's, um, it's a journal, so it's hard content. It's not a magazine. It's hard content that focuses on the economics, politics, and arts and culture within, within, the, BRICS, um, within the BRICS nations. Okay, amazing. So what's the current uh, business structure of uh, BRICS Media, Media Group? I'm fortunate to be the group executive. Mm -hmm. uh, but I report to my executive chairman, uh, Mr. Te Mabanga. Um, and then below me, I've got the CFO, I've got um, our head of legal. Uh, then what we've done is within the different entities, we have a business unit executive. So the journal would have a, a managing editor um, or an executive editor who, who makes sure that the publication runs on time. Urban Zulu has the same thing, it has a GM, um, SMG Events has the same thing and, and all the other media entities that we have there. This is Under 40 CEOs. The BRICS Journal continues to produce content focused on the five BRICS member countries, namely Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. The BRICS Media Group is looking to deepen cooperation among member countries through positive and comprehensive media coverage. The first journal launched on 11th of August 2016 and was complementary to venues across all BRICS countries. The journal will adequately inform anyone who is interested or curious about opportunities that exist within the BRICS nations, including business people, government, academics, and travelers. I am keen to glean from Africa's learnings in business. So tell me, um, what are the most critical lessons you've learned uh, and can share on taking a business to profitability and keeping it profitable? I think it's discipline uh, um, for us because obviously we are, we're young people and add to that we are young black people. So we don't have um, the privilege of uh, historical business activity, formal business activity. And some of the markets within which we try to participate um, uh, are not dominated by, by us. So breaking into them is, is really hard. That then means that the amount of revenue that, that, that comes in, it's so important how you manage it. It's so important that you make the correct sacrifices as a leader to yourself 
in order for your organization to sustain. You also have to always be realistic and understand that it's a tough terrain. Any business, any business that you hope to be successful uh, will enter and compete in a very tough terrain. Um, and you need to be willing to work, work the hours, work the sweat, um, be humble, um, work extremely hard once again, and, and, and just tell yourself you can do it. If you believe in your product, then just tell yourself that you can do it. Okay, I'd like to quickly just, you know, go back a couple of years <laughs> to when you were a child growing up. Where did you grow up? You know, um, uh, and you know, where did you go to school? And really, you haven't even shared with us. What did you read in school? I'm a very closed, uh, <laughs> closed uh, personality, but I'm from um, I'm from a, a town in the south of Durban, which is in KwaZulu Natal, okay. um, called Mkababa or Mnini, the formal name. Okay. Um, I come from a family of three. Three boys. I'm the eldest. Hmm. Um, I probably owe my being to my mother um, hmm. and my grandmother, but obviously my extended family. We are very close knit, extended, big family. Um, hmm. So that's where I grew up, uh, or that's where I'm from. Rather, I grew up throughout the country. I've lived in Cape Town, Mossel Bay, Durban, Johannesburg. Johannesburg predominantly uh, most of my life. I've also lived overseas, like you mentioned before, mm -hmm. in uh, Kuala Lumpur. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much been my, my life. Um, <laughs> reading. I, I, I read. Uh, I used to read much, much more. I'll, I'll tell you, I used to read. Um, there was a time I could recite Macbeth just off the top of my head. And uh, an, an interesting book we've got in high school here called Maru. Mm -hmm. um, but I read a couple of um, a couple of other books. Right now, I'm always swamped with reports <laughs> and proposals that I need to read and approve and amend. Uh, so that's what rings in my head. But I mean, it, it's something I welcome. Now what makes the business landscape in South Africa unique? It's something that's very close to my heart, and that's why I participate in, uh, in structures like the PYB, like. Um, South Africa Youth Entrepreneur Zone and many other foundations and forums. Um, it's, it's, we are unique people and that can be replicated in every African, um, African country. So what I'm saying right now is actually um, we're just a microcosm of the, whole, of the whole continent. But we are so unique because we come from different struggles, uh, different classes uh, within our social backgrounds and economic backgrounds. And we think so differently and, and different neighborhoods um, that even how we come up with solutions, it, it's not necessarily the, the solution itself. It's how a South African would come up with a solution. So there's always a creative aspect to it. Um, we've always ha had this rallying spirit of, of self-belief. Uh, self-belief, and that's what we measure ourselves against. And that's what um, you'll find, if, even if you listen closely to any of the conversations that South Africans have, and anything that they might be unhappy with, you actually realize that it's because of this humongous self-belief um, that I think in, in, in many of the African countries we have. Um, and, and that's what makes us judge ourselves so, so harshly, and not even realize that, oh, you know what, you're actually doing quite well. So tell me, how has travel and interacting with different cultures impacted you, know, you and then your business? Cost of travel is expensive, but it opens up your mind so much to what people are doing and how they are doing it. And it, it, it's more about a collection of wisdom. So as you go to, through different countries, I make it a point um, to, to, to experiment in the foods, uh, just walk around in the markets, just see how people interact, the hand gestures that they use. Are they different from ours? Are they the same from ours? Um, uh, the traffic, the traffic, how the driving styles. Um, we spent quite a lot of time in India last year, because the BRICS summit was in India, and it's just such an amazing culture. But 
it's actually the same as here. There's still the rustle and the bustle. There's that excitement. That's when you pick up the energy from people that people want to live, people want to um, make um, successes of their lives. Um, yeah, so travel, I would recommend, if you can afford, first travel in your own country, discover all the different cultures that exist. Um, it will give you a better contextual understanding of who you guys are as a country um, and the different voices and how to make sure that all those voices are in one pot. And then extend yourself and go abroad and learn about your brothers in Nigeria and Angola, in uh, um, Ivory Coast, in Kenya, um, in Rwanda, in Mozambique, Zambia, name it. Learn about them, learn what drives them because their situations are different, uh, but the creative ability to solving solutions is the same. Amazing, mm. amazing. Now, um, you've obviously earned a couple of nods, recognitions, <laughs> accolades for your work. What do these um, accolades, what do they mean to you? You know, uh, I'll be honest, I'm from a rural area, so, you know, I, I don't, we don't take them. Uh, it, it's obviously appreciated, uh, but the real impact, uh, I'll tell you the honest truth, when we first, for instance, the journal, when it went out on shelves on issue three, that was the first time it was on shelves because it's a bit hard getting onto the shelves. It's when people who, who care about you and people who even don't know you, so polar opposites, they'll tweet you or they'll congratulate you and they'll try to find out who you are and who is behind this and the different people that are behind this. It's, it, it's when you are able to take the money that you've made, and you are able to buy school uniforms, um, contribute towards the painting of a school, pay for school fees, um, um, pay for uh, um, sanitary pads, and, and campaigns like that. That's, that's the true value of, um, or at least for me, in, in, in being able to do all those things, be recognized, but then what do I do with all that recognition? It's the ability to transfer it to those who we want to also be in the elevated um, uh, place we might find ourselves in society. All right, so we know human resource is a key element to consider when building any enterprise. How do you typically hire? You always have to assess the, the business strategy for the year and try and identify the characteristics and skill set that's needed. Um, as a youth-owned business, we um, obviously first lean towards hiring youth. Um, uh, you obviously keep up with the energy and so on and so forth, but it, it's really about identifying the right fit of a character and skills because you'll be bringing someone into a team um, and they need to gel. So they might not, if you bring, say, the most skilled person but their character does not gel well, you then have difficulties in working. So that's uh, pretty much our approach to, to hiring. All right, so how would you describe your leadership style? I'm strict. Um, I believe a lot in people, um, but I'm very strict and I'm unapologetic about it. Um, I believe we are here to work, first and foremost. We've got a responsibility to maintain the business, to make sure it's a success, so that we can um, um, earn our salaries and so on and so forth. And then that obviously has a, a, a good effect onto your lives and your family's lives. So I'm, I'm unapologetic about that. I do believe that as, as a young person, a young black person, um, you are thrust into an environment where you, you, your space to make mistakes is much less. And, and therefore, you always have to think about how you represent yourselves, what you do, and the success of, of the companies, and how even those companies behave. So. Yeah, that's pretty much my leadership style. All right, you just talked about mistakes. So um, tell me about your flaws and failings as a leader. The problem with being strict, first and foremost, is that you, you tend to be a bit too stubborn uh, at times. And, um, and sometimes I, I think uh, because I'm a hard person, uh, maybe how I speak and uh, how firm I'm, I, I speak does not have the intended, um, intended effect. 
so people might feel hurt a bit, even though that's not the, in, the intention. Um, uh, obviously, as, as, as I learn and I recognize some of the mistakes, um, I, I try to deal with them without um, radically uh, changing my, my persona. All right, so how important uh, is delegation to you? It's extremely important uh, to learn to delegate. When you start as a small business, which is where we started, we started by pretty much um, us doing everything. Um, even as much as we've identified the roles, we did pretty much everything. Then we started hiring uh, strategic people to fill in strategic positions. But there's, you, you have to let go and you have to give someone the opportunity to both do well and do mistakes. Then if they do a mistake, a mistake, sorry, they have to be afforded the opportunity to learn and grow from their mistake. And, and, and that pretty much is the art of delegation. It's not just saying, here, here's work. It's saying, here, I believe that you can do the work and do it very well. And if you make a mistake, you will be able to learn from your mistake and I'll still be able to give you work. All right, so what values are important to you and your firm? It's about creativity. It's about working extremely hard. Um, it's about the effort, and uh, I think I'm, I'm actually quite proud of the team that we have because, um, as you, you saw, they, they, it's late in the evening and they're still here. They work extremely hard. Our managing editor is in India. Our chair is probably in a meeting. Um, everyone works extremely hard. They really put in the effort. Um, sometimes days, weeks go by, and we are all not in the office. Uh, we are all somewhere across the globe, but we're all contributing towards one agenda. So I, th I think that for me really resonates. Okay, amazing. So what would you say is the biggest letdown that you've experienced in your career so far? As a business person and entrepreneur, I think for me it's possibly the businesses where I've gone into business with friends. Obviously everything has context and... Uh, everyone can justify their reasons, but at the end of the day, you know, because it's a friendship, there's always that much more emotion that you put into the pot and hope and belief that, you know, you'll be able to work through the issues. So when, they, when you are unable to work through the issues and perhaps someone gives up or someone doesn't pull their weight, it's, uh, I would say that has pretty much been the most disappointing. Other problems that exist are, are problems that, you, you should expect. So when you do your SWOT analysis of your business, those are the problems that you should have picked up. Um, and you should have a particular attitude in, in welcoming some of them so that you are able to make the relevant changes to prevent them in the future. This is Under 40 CEOs. Africa describes himself as proudly a child of the African soil who appreciates and values African heritage as it is the basis from which his foundation and grounding stems from. However, does his heritage guide his lifestyle choices? I must find out. Amazing. So I have a few quick five questions for you. Go ahead. What do you love to eat? I actually love meat. Okay, so how would you describe your fashion style? I obviously have to wear my suits. I enjoy wearing them. What brands do you love to wear? I don't have a brand particularly. So what's your favorite car to drive? I really love the BMW 5 Series and the Jaguar XE. My favorite uh, travel um, destination or area is the Bonderland. So what other CEOs do you currently look up to? I love um, the CEO of Transnet. Uh, Transnet is your, is your biggest railway agency in the continent. Okay. So what's your favorite book of all time? <laughs> I don't really have... To be honest, what makes you happy? These particular values that I draw from coming from the situation that I've come in to be where I am. So a lot of natural inspiration can be drawn. But when I look around and I look at our, um, our people and their ability to just overcome so many problems and so many adversities and still do it with a face, with a smile on their face, is, is, is for me what when I walk outside are the things I'm actually paying attention to. So when I'm walking um, or I'm in the mall or I'm driving somewhere, 
I just look at how people are interacting and I realize that with all the problems that exist uh, in, in society, uh, people are still able to smile. Um, obviously, I draw my, um, is like everyone has a bias to drawing the happiness from family, from friends, from loved ones. And to the people where if you drive outside, there are lights that are on. We're working extremely hard to make sure that whatever they want to achieve, they achieve. That really uh, puts a smile on my face. All right. Thank you for coming on Under 40 CEOs Africa. Thank you. Thank you. Ngebong. All right. <laughs> Hi, I'm Africa Mkangala. And you too can be an under 40 CEO.